All right, welcome to uh, Flame CV Podcast, uh, the video version. Um, Connor's area stops in as well. And, uh, you know, Connor, maybe just uh, before we get into, uh, you know, a few things, this, we're going to go a little broader here, but um, maybe just take me through what the last week or so has been like for you. I don't know if you can remove yourself from it for too long, <laughs> but um, what's it been like here the last uh, week or so? Yeah, no, it's it's been awesome. I think just being here and, and being up with the guys and and obviously the last two games getting a win is, has been awesome. And, and um like I kind of mentioned over the last week, it's, it's every kid's dream to kind of play in the NHL. So to kind of be here and kind of take things day by day and, and kind of every day something new to learn and, and something new to, to kind of attack. But it's it's been awesome so far. I don't know if you know this about Brendan, but typically we have a rule that we only have one Saskatoon native on the podcast <laughs> per, over you know, the limit per episode, right but uh, we'll make an exception for you in this case. Uh, so, I mean, on the subject of current events, I mean, uh, you, I mean, you get the goal. Uh, you've got a point in every game so far, so I'm assuming that's a nice feather in your cap. But specific to last night, I mean, uh, you guys have really found something between yourself, Nas, and, and Yegor Sharangovich. I mean, it looked like you're buzzing. What does it feel like uh, to be out there with those guys and creating as much as you are right now? Yeah, it, f- it feels great. Obviously, coming up, you, you want to do what you can to kind of put yourself in a position to, to kind of help the team and, and make yourself noticed and, and kind of prove a point and, and whatnot. And, and obviously, it helps when, when you can produce somewhat. I think uh, our line's been, been going good. I think it's, it's been awesome to play with those two guys, obviously guys that have been around for a while now, and especially Nas. I've, I think I mentioned a couple times, you know, you got a you got an all-star and and a guy to, to kind of play with at that pedigree that it's kind of just given me things to learn and, and little teaching moments, even if it's on the bench, just quickly little things to, to kind of talk about. And, and he's always engaged in the game. So it, it's awesome to, to kind of be on his left side and, and kind of learning things day in, day out. It, just to follow up on that, because I know you're a bit of a I don't know, historian. You, you've once said that you're a bit of a hockey nerd. So I know growing up and, and being around the game and watching it as much as you probably did growing up, um, what do you remember about a guy like Nazem Kadri? Because it wasn't that long ago where you are probably watching him on TV and winning a Stanley Cup, and now you're playing on the same line with him. Yeah, 100%. I think for for me, is yeah, I can think of highlights of, of Nas playing playing in Toronto, even uh, probably is the first time I think back of him. And, and even in the OHL, you see those highlights. But I, I remember being a, a, a younger kid uh, coming into my teens and, and just seeing Nas in, in Toronto and – and how successful he was as a young guy, and then obviously a couple of years back winning a Stanley Cup, you got to sit so to to have a guy like that in the middle of you is is pretty special and, and something you don't want to take for granted. But I think, like I said, it's someone you can learn from every day. Those uh, like last night, uh, I'll say last night, but I guess um, you know we look at it uh, broadly. But a game <laughs> like that when the building's buzzing and a third period, I mean that's kind of. Uh, you know, kind of what you think about when you talk about playing in Calgary and and, uh, and seeing this building like that. What was what was that feeling like when you see you know things start to go so well in the third and, and that feeling? Yeah, it's it's awesome. I think that's that's kind of atmosphere you want to play in yeah. every night. And and I think we had it right from the start of the game last night. I think we were we were kind of firing all cylinders. Obviously, they grabbed the lead two nothing, but I don't think we we're too too worried in the dressing room. Obviously, you, you get a little little frustrated with just letting up two even when we we're playing good. But I think we were kind of knew we were all over them and and then you get the fans behind you after you get one and and you just keep rolling line after line and line after line and and through the end of the second right into the third and we were kind of able to take over that game I I know you've answered this question a ton already about scoring your first NHL goal and every kid grows up dreaming about how it's going to play out maybe this is a bit of a weird question but I'm curious when you're in that moment puck hits you you're in the crease you probably had to find it for a quick second, but <laughs> yeah. I'm curious, what's going through your head? Because it seemed like it was playing out in slow motion in some ways. Yeah, honestly, like, I, I felt the puck hit me, and that's all, all that went through my head. I knew I was behind the goal. I was like, I just got to score. I just yeah. got to score. I just got to score. I was, like, kind of got lucky to the fact. I knew it hit me, but it kind of dropped behind me, but my momentum carried the puck to the front <laughs> of me, so so pretty lucky there. But I think all that was going through my head is, like, I got to put this in the back of the net, so... <laughs> Um, no, it was awesome. I kind of blacked out after I put it in the back of the net and kind of just overcome with emotion, pretty excited, but it, it was awesome. So then I have to ask, because I was thinking in the moment when you scored that goal, I was like, oh man, that's so cerebral. He's kind of waiting for it to settle down before he smacks it in. Was that what was going on or were you actually just trying to find it in the moment? I, I think for me, I was, I was just trying to find it. Yeah. Like <laughs> it, it, when I look back at it, it kind of feels like it was slow-mo, but it was the game. I was like, I was just trying to find a puck. Like it was... Felt like it was in my stomach, and then it was behind me. Then it was in front of me. So it, it was pretty cool. 
You scored that goal a few times though in your head, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like that. Eh? Yeah. Park behind the goal. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Enough about current day. I, I wanted yeah. to ask you a little bit. Um, well, okay. Two Saskatoon guys. So, so yeah, I can we leave have this in common. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, so you, we didn't have a team, right? Like growing up, you know, I, I think everybody in our parts, uh, you had some combination. There was some sort of mo- moment that made you become a fan of one team. For me, I think it was like the Leafs because it was my dad's team. Who, 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 what, uh, what, what caught you that, originally? That sounds exactly like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think for me quite a bit, like just between me and all my buddies, obviously my dad was, was kind of a Leafs guy and then yeah. just all over the place a little bit. But I think even from Saskatchewan, it's just like, who's a good player this year? Uh, we should cheer for their team a little bit. And then a little bit of bandwagon. You know, I, like I, I kind of mentioned this earlier in a different interview, I think, in Saskatoon, it was always Edmonton, Calgary, Toronto, Montreal, always on TV. So sure. those four teams just always going. And and uh, Dad was a Toronto fan, and and especially as I got a little older into my teens, as Toronto started to become the team they are now, is a little easier to cheer for them. But I think uh, overall, it was it was a little bit of everyone. It was mostly just bandwagon. Like yeah. like I said, it's who's going to be a good player this year? Oh, who's got ten goals already this year? Ah, that's that's my team. That's yeah, my that's team. my guy. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my guy. I've been cheering for yeah. him all week. Exactly. Um, Hey, what about um, growing up? Like, so when Saskatoon, what do you remember early days of hockey? What was your? I was a I was a Baron at first, and then uh, and then a Red Wing. What was your association? I was always Bobcats. Bobcats, Bobcats okay. straight up. Bobcats, yeah. no, was, rivals. Yeah, it was it was good. Um, can't say I remember a whole lot of minor hockey. More just like going to the rink after school, but then as soon as you get home, going to the outdoor rink and probably yeah. having a little more fun even than you did at practice. So yeah. I think that's something I always remember. Just like whether it was home from school or home from hockey or, or whatever activity I had, it was it was going going home straight to grab the hockey skates and get to the outdoor rink. Absolutely. Yeah. So speaking of rivalries, uh, me and Parks were talking about it. I, I did live in Martinsville for six months. Uh, is the, is <laughs> there, there, I told him it doesn't count. Is there a Saskatoon-Martinsville no. rivalry that I was unaware of? Or like, what, uh, no, uh, or what? <laughs> to be honest, like... It's it's there, like it's, really, especially 100%. in like it's like two you, minutes away. As yeah. you get older like into them. like uh, <laughs> as you get to like th- twelve, thirteen, fourteen into that age group of hockey, I think those teams when Saskatoon plays at Warmer or Martinsville, it's yeah. always yeah a well, little extra edge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. That's how <laughs> yeah. I remember. I That's said great. you don't count. You're That's not great. you're not welcome at the table. <laughs> so were you a Blades fan then too? Did you go to games or anything? Yeah, like I w- we went to a lot of Blades Blades games. Like like Brennan said, it's there's there's no professional team or anything sure, so yeah. it's it's always blades hockey i think for me as as a young kid you, you see all those guys come through the blades and uh like Braden shen i yeah. think that's like a prime yeah. example of a guy come through there he's someone to cheer for come back for the memorial cup and and i think that's you see a lot of good hockey through there and a lot of guys that play in this league went through that league so um i think that was always something to do on a on a cold night is, is go to a blades game so that was always fun if if i wasn't too busy with my hockey yes uh, oh, I wanted to just quickly ask you about um, World Junior experience. Um, I, I, we were kind of looking at it today. I mean, you had some unique experiences given it went yeah. all through COVID too. Yeah. And it's like yeah. the draft. And I remember being here, like just in another room beside that day that you were drafted and we had to do the phone call or a Zoom <laughs> yeah. call or whatever. Yeah. I mean, what do you remember about those times? I mean, kind of a weird time in hockey in general, but yeah. some pretty big moments in your life. Yeah, for sure. I, obviously, World Juniors is special. It, it, it was not quite the full experience without – with being on home soil and not sure, having sure. the home crowd behind you. But at the end of the day, it's the World Juniors, and, and you're playing at the, high, the top level there. So that's something I'll always remember. Uh, not the not the perfect way to end it, but yeah. um, obviously some some really cool, but also some kind of unprecedented with all the stuff we went through. We go to camp. We have to quarantine for two weeks, and then you're coming out of a 12-, 13-day quarantine. Your legs are stiff. You're right on the ice the next morning to play a scrimmage to – try and make a hockey team so right. there, were, there were some crazy things we went through and, and a lot and a lot of downtime just with quarantining and sitting in a hotel room because you can't do anything and and not as much team activity as you'd really want but at the end of the day it was the world juniors so it's something that always holds special to me on that note the bonding getting together like you said that would have been a challenge but did you guys how did you find ways in those situations to maybe come together as a team and still you know make as much of that experience as you could under the yeah, circumstances. Yeah, hundred percent. I think at the end of the day, it honestly kind of came down to like team meals, which yeah. where like you're just trying to sit with new guys and and talk and and uh, kind of learn more about them. Obviously, we had a few activities together. You got practice, and you know how it is in the locker room. Everyone kind of 
can be themselves and 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 just chit chat and and that's where you kind of get to get and know the guys more but like I said, it was, it was a lot of downtime. It was a lot to the rink and, and back to your room, stay healthy. So um, <laughs> I think it was it was cool, though. I think you 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 know all those guys now, and, and a lot of them are playing in the NHL right now. So just to kind of keep up with, with knowing them and, and uh, keep in contact with them is, is always something cool. Pretty good team. I was looking at that roster today. I'm like, not oh, bad. Not yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah, really good team. <laughs> really good yeah. team. Um, Pelts, I want to ask you about that because you're talking about relationship. What do you remember at your first meeting of uh, Dolce and how that <laughs> became uh, the friendship that it is? <laughs> I, yeah. I honestly couldn't even think back to the first time I met Pelts. Probably five years ago or so now, just in one of the Hockey Canada events, he was probably just yelling or screaming something <laughs> in French or broken English in the dressing room. So, yeah. But, yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely something special. I think that's a guy you – you look forward to going out for supper with or hanging out with or coming to the rink and just see him in the morning because, you know, the energy is always going to be there. He's going to probably say something stupid that even <laughs> if you're in a bad mood, you're going to laugh. So uh, I think that's the guy you always want to be around. Speaking of bonds uh, and Zoom calls, actually, because I remember the night that you were drafted, you, you went through the media gauntlet and all that stuff. I remember you went out of your way just looking back on your season with the Blazers, talking about your relationship with uh, your trainer, Colin Robinson. Toledo, is that yeah, correct? Yeah. Um, you know, you're going through the, the emotions of scoring your first NHL goal, playing your first NHL games. Um, that bond, is that somebody you, you maybe loop back with and reach out to and, and talk about the experience over the past week here? Yeah, he, he reaches out all, all the time here and there. So um, he, he's, he's a great guy. I think he helped me along my junior career for, for four straight years. And, and he made life pretty easy for me, and, and he was always there to, to kind of be a helping hand, whether it was just to cheer me up or, or keep me going, whether tough times or good times, he was kind of always even keel and, and someone you kind of just wanted to sit down and talk to. And, and he, he sent me a video after I played my first game and got my goal of him just screaming into the camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, it was pretty awesome, and, and that kind of always cheers me up. But for sure, I think uh, junior, you, you leave home at – I was 15, and – and you kind of you have your billets and everyone, but I think to have another person around you that's uh, kind of was always there for me, supporting me was was Toledo. So he he always helped me along. That's cool. Good stuff, man. I I, I mean, next stop for for us is uh, is Toronto. So it's kind of full circle from our conversation off the top, <laughs> yeah. and uh, it'll be kind of cool to see. I'm sure you're looking forward to uh, getting into the big smoke. And, uh, yeah, and, and no. playing the Leafs. No, I'm I'm really excited to to be there. I think like you. S- like we talked about, it's it's a team that's that's always been on TV as a kid growing up and kind of media mecca and center of the hockey world. So I think it'll it'll be fun to get out there for sure. And I know I have uh, my brothers out in Ontario and and I have some other friends and family. So I think it'll be pretty cool to to kind of hopefully see them and and um, uh, just be in be in Toronto. Good stuff. Well, uh, we appreciate the time. Uh, I know Saskatoon's still buzzing, so I still yeah. get the updates on my <laughs> yeah. phone too. And yeah. Martinsville can beat it. And uh, <laughs> right. appreciate the time. <laughs> no, thank you so much, guys.